Stan Jabalisco at your service, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations, although you'll never hear me using those phonetics on the air because I use CW and PSK pretty much exclusively. What I'd like to talk about here is some more uh, issues in regards to the phenomenon known as antenna currents on a transmission line. Antenna currents occur when radiation from the, the antenna strikes the feed line and induces current in that feed line as if that feed line were itself a receiving antenna. Generally speaking, in a feed line, in a properly operating balanced line like this, like what you see here, the current from the transmitter flows in opposite directions but equal amplitudes at every point along the line so that everywhere in space around this line except very very close to the antenna uh, close to the line these two electromagnetic fields cancel each other out so the line in effect does not radiate nor does it pick up signals however if there's anything asymmetrical about this system, you can get currents in this line induced by the antenna. Normally, in a symmetrical system like this, where this angle right here is 90 degrees, and the antenna is fed in the center, and there are no obstructions nearby that would create a greater current in one side of the antenna than the other, the currents from this wire induced in the line exactly cancel out the currents induced by this wire in the line. So you don't get antenna currents. But there are certain very frustrating exceptions. I remember when I lived at my parents' house and in high school and college, I put up a center fed antenna. It was actually a random length of wire. I think about probably about 70 feet long. I don't remember exactly, but it was a, roughly the size of a 40 meter dipole, but not exactly. It employed a ladder line, a 450 ohm ladder line like this, and it went down to the antenna tuner, which back then was the Johnson Viking matchbox. Do you remember that? that uh, transmatch the match box was a, I believe a 275 watt rated antenna tuner by the EF Johnson company which operated out of Wasika Minnesota only about 30 miles away from where I lived so I believe my dad drove me over there one time to get one of these transmatches and it I don't know where it went but it, it was a really great antenna transmatch it was designed to truly tune a balanced line. Another antenna transmatch that will do that is a PALSTAR transmatch. Google on that word PALSTAR and it'll take you to their site and it's intended specifically for balanced transmission lines and it's a true balanced tuner. Even though I had everything in order, a true balanced tuner, a line that ran away as for at least a half a wavelength at a right angle from the antenna. A straight antenna, more or less the same height above the ground all the way from one end to the other. Coaxial cable between the tuner and the radio with a good electrical and what I thought was a good radio frequency ground. Nevertheless, I got, a, uh, I got radio frequency energy in the shack. RF in the shack and it really drove me nuts. What it did was I had a, an electronic keyer back then and a Drake R4A and T4X pair with a, an electronic keyer. I forgot, I forget now who made it. It was a kind of a, an obscure brand but it was a very nice keyer. The problem with it was that when I ran more than about 15 or 20 watts or 30 watts power output 
that keyer started to go nuts whenever I operated on 7 megahertz and the phenomenon seemed to be peculiar to 7 megahertz. It didn't happen on the other bands but it drove me nuts on 7 megahertz and it was obviously RF energy in the shack. Well, what, what was I supposed to do? Not operate on 40 meters? Well, if you add a little length of line, you can get rid of a problem like that in some cases. Because if the line happens to be resonant at the frequency of interest, you're going to get an increased risk of RF in the shack and antenna currents. Even if you design the antenna properly, and by this I mean any integral multiple, say n is an integer, any integral multiple of one-fourth of a wavelength, treating this feed line not as a feed line, but imagining it as a single, a simple wire antenna, because it's, after all, picking up signals from the antenna. So at, for the velocity factor, you must consider it to be what a, an ordinary single wire would be, which is generally about 95%. Whatever the velocity factor of the line is as it operates as a transmission line, this latter line probably about 90%, uh, some twin lead in other forms of feed lines may be as low as 80% or so, you need to consider this feed line as a receiving antenna, as something that picks up the energy like an antenna when you calculate the length. Then you can calculate all of the integral multiples of a quarter of a wavelength. And the approximate formula for a quarter of a wavelength for a simple wire antenna like this in feet is 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So figure out that number and then avoid making the feed line any multiple of that number. And <laughs> then you will minimize the chance of antenna currents even further, even sometimes when your antenna is otherwise properly designed. Uh, if necessary, you will may have to add or take away some line. Usually people make the line as short as they can conveniently, so it's a lot easier to add a little extra line than it is to take line away. Another solution uh, uh, to this particular conundrum might be to change the length of the antenna. However, the best result is to avoid any resonance in this length of transmission line because if it is resonant, that is to say any integral multiple of a quarter of a wavelength, you greatly increase the chance that it will pick up radio frequency energy in a way that it's not meant to do. So that is a little tip uh, from uh, old timer W1GV. I was first licensed in 1966, so in two years I will have been a radio amateur for a half a century. If I live that long, and <laughs> sometimes I'm starting to wonder. Well, now, nah, I'll live to be at least 62 years old. I was licensed in sixth grade when I was 12 as WN0OKV. Back then, the phonetics were Oscar King Victor. Now, I guess they would be Ocean Kilo Victor, but in 1977, when I went to work at the ARRL headquarters in Newington, Connecticut, I got the vanity call sign W1GV and have held that call sign ever since. Until next time, Stan Jibalisco saying 73 from the Black Hills of South Dakota. Until the next installment in this Antenna Current series, so long.